is coming. All these voices. They're not yours. You had no right to them when you were alive, and you have no right to them when you're dead. Huh? That's what it sounded like. Good, you know who I am. And then you know I'm not playing. You're going to let those women go. In Jesus' name, you're going to let those women go. Even here watching this right now? Watching this right now. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring Into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr. And with me as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Good evening, everybody. May the 4th be with you and happy Cinco de Mayo. Good evening, everybody. All right, so this is old boy's week yet again. That time has come again. Uh, last week, old boy got sick, so we took the week off. And... Uh, he got better. So, this week, is old boy's pick, as I said, let's see what he chooses. Oh boy. Go ahead, brother. So, this show is going to be something I wanted to do. Um, I told James about it. What is the fascination with women and serial killers? And actually, all together, with anybody, men, women, what's the... A lot of people have a lot of fascination. They're fans of them. Love serial killers and murderers. And what the fascination with that is and why. And this is why we're going to do the show. Uh, my wife loves serial killers. A couple other people do. So that's why I'm doing this show. Um, so I figured we'd do it. So I told James about it. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Tell us what you think in the comments. We always love to hear what you have to say. All your feedbacks. Tell us what you think. What shows we should do. And what you would do. And what do you think and why. So that being said, here's my opinion. I think a lot of that is with, and, and the first thing with women is, is women like, not everyone, and it's just, I'm not saying every woman, so don't get offended, a um, pretty good amount of women like dangerous men. The whole biker look, fighter, UFC, tattooed, bad guy kind of look, gangster, even killers. Um, I think that that's the thrill you know there's a thrill to that i think men i think that's kind of there there's a small part of people i think that like the and i'm saying women or men um that like it that there's something about it because they have the same kind of thoughts and feelings but they just don't act on it. And I think a lot of people do that. And that's that's the other theory I have on that. Now, I'm not just saying women. I'm saying men, uh, women in general. Um, you know, Hollywood and these documentaries glorify a lot of it. Like the Jeffrey Dahmer show. I know you guys all probably watched it on Netflix. That was like one of the most controversial show, but it, it was popular. And I know they're going to do another one about another killer. I forget which one it was. <clears throat> um, but I think they're going to start doing these and why the families got so mad, they made Jeffrey Dahmer glorified. They made it look like if you watch the show and I did, and I, it was, it was a crazy show, but I don't feel bad for him. And you know what? If you listen to what he says, and if you ever listen to his interviews, he knew what he was doing. He thought he was getting saved because he went to God and some people are going to agree with him. They're going to say, oh, yeah. And and they're, you know, he forgave himself. If he really does believe in God, he's going to go to heaven. Even though he killed somebody, more than one, about 18, 20, whatever it is. But he had got his own punishment in jail. Somebody murdered him and another inmate because I guess it was just, uh, he was just some other, he did some other crazy crimes, but... The problem is the guy who killed him wasn't doing it like they portrayed it in the show. The guy was talking, he claimed that, but there was other people saying he was claiming he wanted to kill them in the first place to make a name for himself. And there's arguments about, they made him look good too. You know what? Jeffrey Dahmer himself said that he knew what he was doing. Don't feel bad for him. He knew he was wrong. 
Um, that's why he made fun of John Wayne Gacy. He said Gacy knows exactly what he's doing. Ted Bundy did too. He said they're all full, they're lying. They know what they want to do. It's like uh, it's a, a session. Uh, a, 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 they get accessed with this ma imaginary where it, it, it's something they fantasize about, and it becomes a session, and it becomes reality. And that's what happened. He couldn't control it. And there's nothing he could do because, like his dad said, he showed him how to do the taxidermy, but taxidermy. But in his mind, he wanted to do stuff like this, but he just didn't do it. He didn't have, he wasn't that kind of person. But his son was. And there's a lot of people like that out there, and there's a lot of people out there who want to do this kind of stuff. That's why they watch extreme horror movies, extreme disturbing movies, because it gets that part of them out. That's why horror movies help people from doing some of this stuff and I think it does help people it's like a therapy um because <clears throat> I believe there's a lot of people out there who are not telling the truth um I think there's people who are capable of doing a lot of bad things they just don't do it because they know they've been in trouble for it but there's some people who just don't care there's few the one percent of the one percent who just don't care that's with criminal action drugs sexuality um illegal activities um even murder killing that's why i said this is going to be a pg-13 show we're not going to cuss or anything but some of the stuff i'm going to talk about is a little bit on the edge i'm going to only say so much because i'm not going to get in trouble you know but talking about what's happened and i'm just saying my opinion um but a lot of people fantasize about doing bad things but they're just never going to do it because they're either taking medicine, talking to people, or they just don't have it in them. But there's some people who just want to know how to hurt people. Like Jeffrey Dahmer, I think just, I know he had a messed up life, but I think he just wanted to hurt people. And he enjoyed it. Um, and his weird fantasies, and I think he liked it to a point, but he couldn't control it either. It just got out of control. And I think there's a part of them, like a lot of killers, except some of them. I think there's some who are just so sadistic that they don't see anything wrong in what they're doing. But now let's get into the fact of, like I was talking about, a lot of women like Ted Bundy, Richard Ramirez, Charles Manson wasn't a killer, but he had people killed for him. And they said he killed somebody at another time, at a different time. But they had this power how to talk to people, especially women. Um, again, women like the bad guy kind of thing. But some of these guys were so good at doing what they're doing. They're such narcissists. And women, you know, certain guys have that. I mean, women could do it too. There was that, you know, there's a couple women killers like Bathory and there's a couple other ones. Uh, the one lady that was going around killing men, she, pretending to be a prostitute, I forget what her name is. Um, she was a, a female murderer. And... Some of the stuff that happened to her is why she changed and did what she did. Because she had some bad things happen to her too. But it's not an excuse to kill people. <clears throat> um, but women, for some reason, even if they get 100% of the proof, they won't listen to it. Because they want to think they can save these this guy or help this guy. A lot of women do this with relationships too. But we don't want to get into that. I'm not bashing women because some men do it too. Trust me, there's men out there who do it. But a majority of people who like serial killers are women. There's a lot of men, trust me. But, and I, and like some of them marry these guys. Like, <coughs> they'll never see them, but they still marry them. Like, Charles Manson had other wives. Um, if he, she, she came in conjugal visits, because I know some states are different, but that's the only time they're going to see them. They probably get told they're going to get out one day and they believe all their crap, but, for some reason, women are attracted to it. Just like horror movies, um, like Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, and trust me, there's men out there too. I think men like it because of the power trip. Um, you can't be stopped. You can kill and do whatever you want. I mean, that's, that's attractive to certain people. And just like Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees, a lot of women fans, especially Michael Myers. Um, Hannibal Lecter, another one. Um, Freddy Cougar. Um, these are fiction, you know, non-fictional characters. They're fictional characters. And 
these are just movies. But some of these movies were based off of, of true murderers, like Ed Gein and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, Silence of the Lambs and Ed Gein, and, and um, who else was it? Charles Manson was, I think the Hillside Strangler was a little bit about him with the child, Child's Play. I mean, not Charles Manson, Child's Play was a little bit about that. Um, Michael Myers, I don't know um, about that one, but I know some of the killers were based off of what's happened. I think Candyman had some truth to it. Not like he come out of the, the mirror or anything, but I think something happened on those lines. Um, they How they killed him over something. In back in the 1700s, 1800s, it was a different world. Just some people, they get fascinated with somebody too. I think that's what happens with a lot of relationships to the point where they get excess with everybody. Um, and that can be dangerous because they're willing to do anything. Um, there's some people I, um, I, 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 I see it all the time. They fall for somebody they shouldn't be in love with, but they do. And it takes them a long time to get over if they ever do. They might say they do, but they never really do. They get addicted to somebody for about a week. They were treated right for a while. Then the person just totally uses them or beats them up or takes advantage and cheats on them all the time. And they keep coming back because... They think it's going to get better and the person they're going to change that person and it rarely ever happens rarely and they're not that the person doesn't care one bit about them they're just getting something out of it and a lot of times this happens and some people just don't see it and they just it's hard to tell that's why love is very dangerous thing and I think what happens is some of these people are already had some issues in life or relationships or they weren't the most popular people or they didn't have a lot of friends and they start talking to these people and these people tell them what they want to hear and especially with murderers and killers and people go to jail they believe it and it doesn't matter like they'll stay with them forever or still run after them or chase them because they think they're going to change them somehow. Or they're going to get out of jail somehow. They're going to fight in court. That's, they're never going to get out. And you're losing a fighting, you're, you're fighting a losing battle. And I think that's what it is. They, these women, I'm not saying these women, a lot of women, sorry, I'm not meaning to be offensive. A lot of women or men, <clears throat> they, think that they can change that person or maybe they'll be different with them or there's some people who just love murdering and, and horror movies and stuff like i'm not saying they love murdering they love they, they love the whole thing about it that's why murderers are so popular they made cards they made videos they made movies they made posters um, all kinds of stuff. John Wayne Gacy, people were making pictures of a clown dressed up like as a murderer. I mean, they idolize some of these guys. They shouldn't, but they're going to because there's something about them that, that turns them on. There's a part of them that likes that. Um, I hate clowns anyway. I'm not a clown fan, so I would never wear anything Gacy did. And Gacy, you see the stuff he's done. I don't know how you could like that guy. Um, I get it. The clown thing's like crazy looking, but you have to realize what he did. He raped and killed teenagers and men and killed them and tried to deny, deny it. And he got caught and still didn't believe he did it. Jeffrey Dahmer killed. And I'm like I said, I have to be careful what I say. And murdered people and also committed horrible acts on them and cannibalism. That's as far as I'm going to go. Ed Gein killed people and his mom and made up a suit for a human to become a, uh, a, for a woman body suit. And that's as far as I'm going to go by that. And there's people who like that. So these guys did horrible things, but some people I think want to believe something different or they did it for some reason 
these people did it because either they had mental problems, something bad happened to them, and there are some people who did it just for fun. Because they're just like that. They have no conscience. Um, that's why I don't want to say too much. Like I said, I'm staying PG. I might have went a little, I'm, you know, I might even have to edit some of this stuff. Um, <clears throat> it, it, just like H.H. H. Holmes, a lot of people like him, Jack the Ripper, a lot of people like him, he murdered women and prostitute women and did horrible things to them and some people still like him. Women. A lot of people, women like him. After what he did, he killed a lot of women. What, what baffles me, but you know what, it is what it is. People want to believe whatever they want to believe. Some people, like I said, they're attracted to it. There's something about them. Maybe it's just the darkness. I'm not saying that they're bad people. Trust me, I'm not saying it. the people who murder. Yes, that, that that's I'm. They're bad. <laughs> and the people who like them, I'm not saying they're bad people. But I, I just there there's something missing there. You, you or you just you have you have a different mind. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Watching shows and stuff, documentaries. I'm not talking about that and being that's cool. That fine. I get it. You like to see what happened, murder trials. I have nothing wrong with that. Don't take it like that. But it's when you're 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 dressing like him and wearing masks like him and you know, I even like horror movies and like Michael Myers and Jason and Ash and all them. And and that's the same thing. They're going around murdering people for no reason. <laughs> Some some are like Jason. He you know he, he the first couple movies you can make a point is, but now he's just going around just killing people for no reason. It, it, it is what it is, and 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 it helps my mind because you know I have a dark mind, but at least I admit it. I'm not going to be like oh yeah, but I I don't idolize serial killers. I never have. Um, there's a reason they're the way they are. Um. Most of them are either egotistical, um, they're conniving liars, they're really good liars actually, um, to the point where they believe their own lies and that can happen. Narcissist, um, all kinds of stuff. Cannibalism, um, just bad things guys and, and ladies. There, it, it just, it baffles me sometimes. Why? But I get it. They, they, they make them look like, you know, they make comic books and people like it. But you got to realize this is real. This isn't fake like Michael Myers and Jason. These people really kill these people like that. And if you're idolizing them, I'm, I'm just like, why? Do you like people that murder people for no reason? I, I'm just, I'm not saying anything bad about you. I just want to know why. And I get it. Write your comments. I'm not trying to attack you. Anybody, I just want to know why. Is it a thrill? Is it you think you're going to change him? Or is it just something you like? And I get it. It's this whole attractment to the bad guy thing. Like Bonnie the Clyde and Clyde. Bad and bad girl. Um, people like it. Like Elizabeth Bathory. I've seen all these people liking her. and Because she was supposed to be a vampire. Or drank blood. But do you realize what she was doing? She was murdering innocent people. And, <laughs> and bathing in, her, in their blood. To think she was going to get younger. She was also very narcissistic and evil, but people like her because they get the whole vampire thing and I get it, whatever. Vampires are awesome, trust me. I know, I love vampires and werewolves and stuff like that. I get it. I'm just asking, you know, in general, why we are, some of you guys are just so fascinated with it. I, I know why people, some people are, they love it, they love the excitement, but I just have my opinions on it. I don't know. I, I'm not trying to make anybody look stupid or anything and argue with anybody and think anybody's crazy. I, I, I just want to know why. And that was what I was doing the show. A lot of people ask that. Why do people have... I, I, I have my opinions. Doesn't mean I'm right, but I have my opinions on it. You know, and I've said my opinion. I think it's just a fascination. I think they see this world that they're going to go out and do stuff together. And, and, and to be honest, you're never going to meet these people because they're going to be in jail forever. Or you're going to meet somebody like that and go around. I'm going to tell you something. Like I said, if you believe that it's cool to go around just murdering people for no reason, I'm sorry. 
you're wrong. It's not. And there's no reason for it. I get it. Things happen for reasons. You got to defend yourself. Uh, if somebody's coming to attack you, tr shooting up your house or trying to rob you or kill you, I get it. You have to defend yourself. That's one thing. But to purposely hurt somebody for absolutely no reason, just because you want to get some kind of thrill out of it or you had some kind of issue when you were a kid, I'm sorry. It's no excuse. You know what you're doing. Quit trying to say you're crazy. You, uh, Sorry, you are crazy because you think that way, but you know what you're doing. Most people know what they're doing, and that's it's hard to defend that. And some people want to believe it. They'll believe anything they hear. They believe that, oh, the government's against me there, or the cops are. They're lying. They're not showing the real evidence. They're, they're, and it, they probably are true. There's probably exaggerations. I know there is. There's been people who go to jail for stuff they didn't do. It happens. Very, very slim. But it happens. But some of these people are just saying this because they're trying to manipulate you. Or they want you to feel bad for them. Because there's a lot of people out there who feel bad for people, even though they shouldn't, but they do. Because they tell them some sob story or they were this and that. I'm sorry I had horrible things happen to me. And if I did something, it was my fault. Not, oh, because this happened. Some people believe that. That's fine. We have difference of opinions. But I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Please let me know what you think. I, I love you guys. It was something different. I know it's going to be a little controversial because I know James is going to say some stuff a lot different than I am. It's just, just so you know, um, I thought about this show. It's something different. Serial killers and horror movies, all that is a very popular subject. And that's why, why women or men really like serial killers. I think that's a lot of it. They, they get, they, they start watching like a movie and they get fascinated like a fan. And that's what they become, like a fan of these killers. And they feel bad for them when they, sometimes you shouldn't if you knew the whole stories. If you actually saw the real pictures of what they do, you'll, most people won't feel that way. There's some people are going to anyway. They're not going to care. They live in a different world. It's just how people are. Nothing wrong with you. That's how you are. That's how you are. But I hope you guys enjoyed the show, guys. And uh, there you go, James. Wow. So... This is a doozy of a pick this week. Why do women like serial killers? Well, probably a better way to put it would be, why are women attracted to serial killers? This one, there's a lot of different ways to go with this. And honestly, there's a lot of landmines uh, in this one as well. Uh, luckily, I spent over half my life on military bases, so... I would say I, I know how to get around some landmines. I do have respect for landmines, but I know how to get around them. So, the obvious easy answer that everybody will give you to this question is it's the bad boy thing. Women like bad boys. But why is that? Let's really break that down and, and kind of dig deep in it. On the surface, a bad boy would be a very stupid choice for a woman to make. They're always down on their luck. They're not going to provide a good home. They're not going to provide a good lifestyle. Uh, most likely they're going to end up dead or in prison. And if they do manage to stay a free man, your existence is going to kind of suck. You're, you're going to be living in bad areas and and not having a good life. So just on a surface look of it, it seems like a very dumb choice. But what could be behind that choice? Because a lot of women make that choice. A lot of women are turned on by these things. You see it all the time on social media. These, these chicks that are just horny as hell for Michael Myers. That's the big one I see all the time. And it, it makes absolutely no sense when you really stop and think about it, what do you think that you're going to have a relationship? Do you think that if Michael Myers was a real person and somehow you met that person, that you guys are going to march off into the sunset happily ever after? Have you ever even seen one of those movies? You're going to end up a pincushion is what's going to happen to you. He's going to slaughter you like he slaughters everybody else. And that's kind of the same way it goes with with all these serial killers that, that women obsess about and, and fantasize about. 
There is no changing them. There is no happily ever after. You're going to end up dead. Period. And it's a dumb choice. But what would cause a woman to make that choice? Now, I'm really stepping out on a limb here. I'm, I'm going into uncharted territories. I am boldly going where no man has gone before. And I'm going to attempt to actually explain women a little bit and, and try to understand what goes on in in their uh, their old cabeza. Or if you'd rather have German, what goes on there in their cuff. So here it goes. The bad boy thing, I think, is almost like genetically programmed into women. Because from the earliest times, I mean, we're talking like prehistory here. We're talking caveman times. Women needed a man that could protect them from all the different animals out there, all the different things that were trying to kill them. So they needed a strong man, a man that was kind of a badass, that could protect them. And over time, that trend has continued. I mean, if you look at the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages, I mean, you had rape, pillage, and burn, man. That, that was kind of the motto. You know, and, and women at that time were, were kind of the property of men is, is what they were considered on a legal basis. And a woman needed a, a man that could protect her back then so that her virtue would remain intact. Because remember, a lot of times the men were, were all fighting, you know. And if you have men coming into your area... And your man is there at home with you, and he can protect you if, if somebody comes in to try to hurt you or rape you or do whatever to you. It makes sense to have a strong, badass guy that can fight, right? That makes sense during that time period as well. Even go a little bit backwards in time from our modern day, but a, a big leap from then, and look at the Revolutionary War period. Once again, you've got men that were called mountain men, right? They went out in the mountains and they, and they hunted and trapped and all that kind of stuff. You would need a man like that to protect you. If you're going out there homesteading and you're out there on the frontier, you've got bears, you've got mountain lion, you've got buffalo. And everybody thinks of the buffalo as, as this beautiful creature that the, that the Native Americans hunted. And then later the, the white man came along and hunted to extinction, almost. But a buffalo is a, is a bad dude, man. I don't know if you've ever been in close proximity to an actual bison, but those things, dude, are, are humongous. And they are foul-tempered. And they will run your ass over just as quick as can be. So you had a lot of natural dangers and predators out there on the trail and out there while you're homesteading. Also, you had very, very unfriendly Native Americans that would want to kill you and scalp you and leave your, your corpse bloating and, and being eaten by birds and stuff. That happened all the time, dude. See, this whole woke culture, this whole, this whole liberal approach to history is, is absolute nonsense. And anything more than just a surface level studying of history can show you that it's nonsense. They act like, like the white man was, was the bad guy. And the natives were the good guys that were hopelessly abused and they didn't do anything wrong. And the white people were just constantly killing them and doing horrible stuff to them. That's, that's not the truth. Yes, the army did some, some terrible stuff, dude. Absolutely terrible stuff. But also, the tribes themselves did horrible, horrible things to the settlers who a lot of times didn't do a damn thing to them. They'd be minding their business, just trying to grow some crops and, and have a life. And they would come along and just slaughter them, man. You know, now there's give and take on both sides of that equation. I'm not saying that the natives were wrong and the white guy was right. I'm saying they're both wrong and they're both right. It's more complicated than, than the dumbed down version that they feed you in history class. So you needed protection if you were weak then as well. Move forward a little bit more, Civil War times. 
once again, needed protection. Because you had a lot of soldiers that were away from their women for long periods of time. And if they came into your area, believe me, there was some shenanigans that went down by force, both sides. And if you didn't have somebody strong there to protect you, now most of the men at that time were, were out fighting, but you know, you, you would have your kids there that could, you know, some of the older kids could help protect maybe, you know, but back then it would have been a good idea to try to get yourself a badass dude to protect you during those situations. Right after the Civil War, once the fighting had stopped and everybody went home, that's when the, the outlaw gang started up, where you had a lot of, of Confederate soldiers that kind of didn't want to give up the war. That's what the, the James gang was. You know, they didn't want to stop, and they didn't surrender. Just because Lee surrendered doesn't mean that they got to surrender. And they kept on fighting, and they kept on robbing and doing horrible things. So it was a tough, tough period of time during that post-Civil War, Wild Wild West period. Very hard times. And it would be a very good idea to get you a very hard man that could help protect you during those times. Now, once again, modern day, supposedly not necessary anymore. Supposedly, women don't need a bad boy to protect them anymore, a big, strong man. That's just more nonsense. It is a false premise based on a manufactured set of data. And I'll explain that to you. What stops men from doing anything we want? Not just two women, but period. What stops us from doing whatever we want to do? Laws. That's what stops us. Now, you have a lot that it doesn't stop. You have a lot of people that don't give a damn about the law, and they will do whatever they want to do. But the majority of guys, the law is what stops us. We don't want to go to prison. So we don't go hooping and hollering and carrying on. The law has made women equal to men. That's not real. That's on paper. That's an idea that we all came up with, that we thought was a good idea. Because in, in a lot of ways, women aren't equal to men. Now, before you all freak out and start -da 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 typing down in the comments and everything, listen to what I'm saying here. I'm not saying women are, are less than. I'm not saying women are more than. We are two completely different things. Physically, a woman cannot compete with a man, period. Now, there are going to be outliers and there are going to be exceptions to that rule. But on a general basis, the average man is going to destroy the average woman in anything physical, period. Just the way it is. You can get mad, you can not like it, that's fine, but that's true. I am six foot five, about 300 pounds. I could destroy damn near any woman on the planet. I don't care who you send at me in a hand-to-hand -hand combat, they're going down. If you don't have some sort of equalizer, you're in a lot of trouble. Now, you might be one of the, the very greatest martial artists in the world or something, and you might stand a chance against somebody my size. Might. Unless that person's had training as well, and I have. So you're going to be in trouble. You might put up a good fight. Physically, you cannot compete. So women physically are no match for men. Now, there are a lot of things that women do a lot better than men. Women are a lot better up here. They're a lot better at the mental game. They know how to, to make men feel guilty. They know how to, to maneuver men to get them to do what they want using various different tactics and techniques that we're not going to go into the, all of them because some of them are rather nasty and, and other ones it do, just doesn't matter anyway let's just say that women got their bag of tricks and they know how to make men do what they want and it, it's not even just physically i mean they can manipulate you and maneuver you exactly where they want you to go because they're better up here 
Now, that's not saying that the average woman is smarter than the average man or the average man is smarter than the average woman. I don't know. I think it's probably different. I think that men are, are much smarter in some things. And women are much, much smarter in some things. I think it just depends on, on what you're talking. Now, pure IQ, I don't know what the stats are on that. I would say probably pretty equal, I would imagine. But physically, not much of a chance. I'll give you a, a story that I heard once that kind of illustrates this very, very well. The Secret Service that guards the president they have somebody at the door to the White House, okay? When you walk in the door, you got people around. When you walk into the area where the president actually is, you have an agent stationed there that's going to make sure nobody gets in there that ain't supposed to be in there, okay? They decided for the sake of quotas and for the sake of political correctness that they were going to give that job to a woman because women are equal to men. Women can do anything a man can do, right? That's, that's the line they give you. So this woman is, is there at the door and she's just feeling good about herself, man. She's, I'm sure she's a very qualified, very, very good woman as far as women go. You know, as far as physical fitness and, and ability and all that, I'm sure she's in the top of her class. But you had a crazy person that wanted to commit suicide. And they thought, I am going to bum rush the White House. I'm just going to run across the lawn with a weapon and, and get shot down. That's how they wanted to go. And they did. They just ran across the lawn. Well, for whatever reason, nobody shot them. Like, the Secret Service was on break or something, I guess. I don't know where the hell they were. But nobody did anything. The guy ran, and he got to the door. And I'm sure when he got there, he was very, very surprised that nobody stopped him. So he opened the door and ran in. So then he sees, he's running towards where the, the door to the, the president's residence and everything is, and he sees that woman Secret Service agent there. So he just starts hauling ass at her. And she's like, stop. And does all the, you know, oh, all that stuff that you're supposed to do. And he just, whack, swats her to the side. Now he was later restrained and taken care of, right? He didn't get the president. But how easily he just swatted her aside like she wasn't even there. And that was a highly qualified woman. Physically, they're no match. So my point is on this is it would be a good idea, even today, for a woman to have a strong man that can protect her. That's our job. Now that might not fit in with the woke culture. That might not fit in with political correctness and, and how we're supposed to believe as human beings anymore. But it's the truth. And too much of this political correct nonsense ignores the truth. It's just plain true. That if I decided that I wanted to do anything in the world I wanted to do to a woman, you put a woman in a, in a cabin in the woods and the door's unlocked, and she doesn't have a gun or anything. The only thing stopping me from going in there and doing anything I want. And just leaving her laying on the ground. The only thing stopping me is me. It's my own sense of morality. My own moral compass. My own fear of the law. Of, of going to jail. It's the only thing stopping me. In a world where the law doesn't exist, in a world like they had before, back in the Middle Ages, back in caveman time, even back in the wild, wild west, in, in, a, in a time like that, what's to stop me? 
Now, I'm not saying I would do those things. I don't believe that's right. I'm not that kind of guy. I was raised differently than that. I have a different set of, of morals and honor. I would not harm a woman in any way. It's just not in me to do so. But if I chose to, what's to stop me? Now, a woman's not going to stop me. Unless she has some sort of weapon that's an equalizer, she's not going to stop me. One-on-one, -on -one, pure physical hand-to-hand, -hand, she's screwed. So that reality, that truth, is at the basis of why women like bad boys. That's why. And the, the other reason it kind of ties into it, why women are attracted to serial killers and think serial killers are so hot and sexy and all that, is because they've been fed a load of BS their whole lives. Most women, I mean, I'm not talking around the world, okay? Because I've been all over the world. I've been to places that are not anything like America, to where women have a horrible life. But here, in the good old U.S. of A., Women are protected by the law, like I spoke about, and by other men. They have no idea what life could really be like for them. They have no idea. They have an intellectual idea. They, they, they've read it of how things used to be for women back throughout history. But they have no real idea of what it would be like to just simply not have any rights anymore. To simply be property again. To where a man could do whatever the hell he wanted to you. And there's really no recourse for you. If he feels like slapping you around, you get slapped around. If he feels like passing you around to his friends, you get passed around. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. That was reality for a long, long time. It's not reality anymore because we have chosen to be better, period. As a society, we chose to make women equal to men. We chose to make it so that they didn't have to suffer and that nobody supposedly has to suffer like that. That's the whole point of our justice system and our laws is to make life fair and good for everybody. But that's not the way it has always been. And when you really stop a minute and you, you think about it and you realize we're just one bomb away, dude. One bomb, one solar flare that knocks the power out. One asteroid impact or comet impact that just jacks up the planet. Completely destroys the infrastructure. Completely destroys all of the governments of the world or at least our government, right? You're going to have a period of time where it's going to be complete and total anarchy. Now, if you think that those guys that whistle at you and make comments as you walk down the road, all that kind of stuff, the, the ones that send you all those pictures in your, in your inbox on your different social media messengers and stuff, those cretins, if you think those people are going to be respectful of you, and they're going to not take advantage of you. If the government goes down and there is no law anymore. If you think that those people are going to respect your virtue. And not do horrible things to you. And you're not going to become somebody's property. When there's total anarchy, you got another thing coming. So the reason why women are into to serial killers is because they portray strength. They take people out. They can walk in a room and take out whoever's in the room. That's how they're portrayed in movies and stuff. And in real life, the media hypes these people up like they're some kind of damn boogeyman. Like they're, they're a superhero almost. So they're larger than life. They have this air of, of toughness, of, of invincibility, of being just the ultimate badass. And that is what a woman is drawn to because she wants that protection. She wants that peace of mind knowing that 
if crap hits the fan, she's got somebody that's going to protect her. The problem is it's misplaced. Because if you think a serial killer is going to risk his life for you and, and make sure that you're safe, you're stupid. Serial killers don't give a damn about you. You are not a sexual object to them. Do you understand that? A normal man might look at you. You might be fine as hell, too. You might be beautiful. And a normal man will look at you and say, damn, man, I, I would definitely protect her. Serial killers don't, don't think that way, man. They're, their sexual attraction has nothing to do with your physical beauty. It's mutilating you that turns them on. So, yeah, they might be turned on by you, but it's going to be while they're dismembering you. So be smarter, ladies. Think about it. If you really want someone that's going to protect you, you find yourself a good man who's also a badass. You find yourself a big guy that can take care of himself. And if you're smarter than that, if you're, if you're like next level brilliant, you find yourself a redneck. Because I promise you this. Nuclear war, asteroid, Yellowstone erupting, whatever the hell the disaster is that destroys the whole planet, there's going to be two things left walking around this, this earth. Cockroaches and rednecks. Because we can survive. We can hunt, we can fish, we can trap. Hell, we're used to being broke. I grew up poor as hell in the mountains and stuff. Man, I didn't have no money. There was a time in my life that if I didn't hunt and I didn't fish, I didn't grow a garden, I didn't eat. Now things got better as time went on, but I mean, there was a time when, when it was dire straits. There was a time when I went out hunting and fishing every day to make sure that there was meat in my freezer that, that my family could eat. People like that can survive. It ain't going to be old... Look at me, I'm a, I'm a bad boy. I wear my pants sagging down my butt, and, and I got all the gold necklaces on, and, and I know all the lingo. It ain't those guys that are going to be around. They're going to cut and run, man. They're going to just, woo, gone. You're going to be like, where'd he go? What happened? He was my boo. He was going to protect me. Nah. He gone. You all by yourself. Find yourself a good old redneck. Learn how to speak, redneck. Understand what we say. Because we don't, we don't talk real good sometimes. We, I, I've been all over the world. I grew up all over the world. So I don't normally have a, a real deep southern or mountain type accent. But when I get to talking about this kind of stuff, and especially when I go to family reunions and I'm, I'm around all these people all the time, then it, it starts to come out on me. And I we, we speak what we call Tuckio. If you, ever, if you want to know what Tuckio is, uh, if you ever watch King of the Hill, you know that one guy that stands on the corner with him, I want to tell you what, man, I want to do, I want to do, man, I tell you, dude, I want to do. That guy, that's Tuckio. What happens is we get to talking so fast, and we have this accent anyway, and that's what it ends up sounding like to some people that don't know how to speak Tuckio, that don't understand what we're saying. But if you're around long enough, you'll understand it. So find yourself a good redneck. That'll protect you. It'll feed you. You'll have a great life, man. You'll, you'll have fresh venison. You'll have fresh fish. You'll have fresh vegetables out of the garden. And anybody that comes to mess with you, your redneck's going to whoop their ass or die trying. I promise that. He ain't going to leave you. You ain't going to be sitting there going, wait a minute, where'd he go? I thought I had a, a, a bad boy. I thought I had a gangbanger. I thought I had a tough guy. Where'd he go? He gone, man. He done left you and ran. Save himself. Rednecks ain't like that. We're Southern. We were born that way. We were raised that way, that we protect our women and we make sure they're okay. If it kills us, we make sure they're okay. So that would be my suggestion. Forget the bad boys. Forget the serial killers. Find yourself a good old boy and settle down and, and live the dream, man. That's what I say. But that's my answer to why women are attracted to serial killers. I told you there was some landmines in there. I told you that there's a lot of spaces in there that are going to piss people off, that people are going to get all upset. But as always, everything I told you tonight was 100% truth. And if you set all your biases and set all of your programming aside and really look at it in a, an objective way, 
you realize I'm right, that what I said is the truth. And once again, I'm not saying that men are better than women or women are better than men. We're just different creatures, man. We are. And to pretend like like a woman can do everything a man can do is is retarded, man. It's it's nonsense. A woman can't do everything I can do, period. I don't care. It's not true. And I'll tell you something else. A man can't do everything a woman can do. There are a lot of things my wife can do that I can't even begin to do. And I'll tell her, too. I'll say, look, I can't do that. I, I don't have any damn idea how you handle that. It completely confuses me, and I just give up, and you handle that. Because I, I, I'm not qualified for that. It's the truth. Women are better at some things than men, and men are better at some things than women. We are not the same. Sorry. That's just the truth of it. But anyway, that's what I got to say. That's my thoughts on it. hope that you enjoyed it. And I will throw it back over to Old Boy now to get his final shout-out, sum-ups, all that, and then I'll be back to close the show. So, Old Boy, go ahead, brother. I want to thank everybody for listening to us on Parax Radio every Sunday nights at 12 a.m. Eastern, 9 Pacific, and the Best Of Show, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, on uh, Tuesday nights. If you want to subscribe, J subscribe to James Hershey's YouTube page. Thank you, guys. Um, we love you. Thank you for listening to us. You guys want any merchandise like shirts, COVID masks, uh, stuff like this, but it's staring into the abyss. <laughs> Posters, we got all kinds of stuff. Hats, beanies, let us know. Also subscribe to James Hershey's YouTube page. I want to thank you guys. Um, we love you. Misfits, Sugar Ladies, Monster Lovers, Demon Hunters, I love you and blessed be. But before I go, I wanted to dedicate this episode to Lori Hancock. She passed away the other day and she was like a second mom to me. She helped me out when I was a teenager and young, when I was younger, younger years. And I used to get in a lot of troubles, fights. She would talk to me, talk to me to the side and always was there, always believed in me. So it is Jim Hancock, her husband. He's always believed in me too. I want to say my condolences to you. And it's very hard. Um, I knew her for a long time. She was a really good person, wonderful person. Um, always gave the shirt off her back so is Jim Hancock wonderful human being wonderful man I wish I could be half the man he is um Lori was a great person and you will always be remembered even with somebody like me um I love you and um rest in peace and condolences to you guys we I love you guys you know that Jim, Phil, PJ, Kaylee, David. I love you guys. And you know that. Your family. And she's in a better place. Rest in peace, Lori. That being said, I hope everybody has a good night. Goodbye. Thank you, brother. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the show. Hope that you learned something. Um, let me know down in the comment section. Once this hits YouTube, what you guys think? Why do you think that women are attracted to serial killers? Why do you think that they sit around and watch serial killer documentaries? Non-stop. Over and over and over again. That's all they ever watch. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's because they all fantasize about killing us? <laughs> in our sleep or something? I think that's part of it. Uh, but there is definitely an attraction there to that dangerous bad boy type. And I think that I, I explained it pretty well tonight. I think I may have hit the nail right on the head. Uh, but let me know down in the comments section what you think. As always, it's up to you to make up your own mind. I love you either way. Now, shameless plug time. I haven't done this in a while. and I'm, I, I catch grief every time because I'm supposed to do this every show and I, I always forget. So, YouTube channel is youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. That's where all the videos are. If you want to watch Staring, Tales, Paranormal News, all that kind of stuff, everything goes there. Um, it's 100% free. Go there and subscribe to the channel. Hit the little notification bell thingy so that you'll be notified every time we post. I try to post several times a week. Um, there's a lot of episodes. There's like almost 300 episodes of Paranormal News that are there. Um, there's... 
about that of staring. There's a lot of episodes of staring. And um, there's almost 100 episodes of Tales, I believe, now, too, that are up on the on the uh, channel. Plus a lot of other stuff. I also put, like, uh, like prepping, butchcraft, survival kind of stuff. Because I do that, too, uh, up on the channel sometimes. So there's a lot of different stuff for you to, to watch and to enjoy. So please go there, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. If you are watching on YouTube right now, thank you very much. Please hit the like button if you would, and make sure that the notification bell thingy is is checked, and uh, subscribe if you have not already, and thank you very much for watching. The merchandise store. The link to the merchandise store is in the description box of every single video on YouTube. If you enjoy staring and you want to support the show or you want to support a lot of the projects that we do, the merch store is a great way to do so. The prices are good and the quality is good, and there you have it. Um, there's a bunch of different design stuff there. There's several different designs of t-shirts and hoodies and, and pillows and blankets and just so much stuff. Um, like I said, I keep the price just over what it costs us to make it. So we don't make barely anything off of it. We're making a little bit, but not much. So that's a good way to, to show your support of the show and help us out to cover the little bit of cost of production and all that kind of stuff. Thank you guys. We love you. We appreciate you. I think I hit everything. Uh, Stream TV, we're on there. Uh, you can watch Tales and Staring now on Stream TV. Um, it's Abyss Broadcasting is the channel, I believe. Um, there on on Stream. And as always, thank you guys. There's probably stuff I'm forgetting and leaving out. If if so, I apologize to the the marketing gods, whatever that I'm supposed to be doing. But Anyway, that's the show. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comment section what you think, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, if you think I'm being a jerk. That's fine. I love you anyway, and I don't mean no offense to nobody. I'm just telling you the truth as I see it, just like I always do every single time. So, there you have it. I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Catch you on the next one. Till I speak to you again. Love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you. And so do we. Bye-bye.